Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today. This video is going to be incredibly useful if any of you are struggling to get impressions or clicks with your Google Ads campaigns. I'm going to be sharing a few different things and a few tweaks you can make to your website, your product feed and your ad account itself to ensure you start receiving impressions on your ads and then also clicks as well. Just before we jump into it, as you know, I have my own Google Ads agency, AdRaw. So if you want a team of experts to manage and scale your Google Ad account for you, then please do fill out the form on our website I'll leave a link in the description below. Now one of the first things I do want to quickly mention is that if you're getting no impressions and no clicks there are several reasons for this. One being that your account is brand new or if you're getting no impressions or clicks on a particular shopping ad for example it might be because you've only just submitted your product data to Google Merchant Center. It can take a few days or up to sometimes a week or two just for Google to start showing that product in the shopping ads network. Now this is completely normal unfortunately it's not quite like Facebook or other ad platforms where you can simply make a campaign and then immediately see impressions. Google does take time. So a key thing to remember here is do not panic and make any sort of rash big decisions. But theoretically, let's say you've already had your product feed on your merchant center for several weeks now. You've already got your ad account and everything set up properly and you're still not seeing either many impressions or hardly any clicks at all. One thing could be is that essentially you're not providing Google enough information about your products. This could be the title, the description, the category you've listed your products as. So for this example here, we're using the Simprosis Shopify app, which is the Google shopping feed app by Simprosis. A very good app to sync your product feed to your merchant center. Now, obviously I'm going to be blurring out my information here, but on this app, you can go into each individual product and change the product title here. You can change the description, you can change the category and a bunch of other things as well. Now, if you've not done this before, this app will essentially only take your Shopify title and your Shopify product description. They'll have this in here and that is the information that is going to be submitted over to Google Merchant Center. And nine times out of 10, especially your Shopify title, it's not going to have too many keywords in it, which is going to limit the reach of the product. Now, one example I like to use in all my videos is a gym brand. You might sell black gym leggings, for example, and likely your product title is going to be black gym leggings, something along those lines, something very short, something very simple. But with this product title in here, this is not going to change what people see on your Shopify page. This is simply the product title and description that is going to be submitted to your Google Merchant Center and what Google will then use to identify your product and make sure it is shown to the correct people. So in these boxes here, in the product title, in the product description, you want to include as many keywords related to your product as possible. So instead of just having black gym leggings, for example, you want to include other things like high-waisted gym leggings, non-see-through leggings, add other colors in the description, you know, any other sort of thing that's relevant to your product, you can put in here. Now, things like gym leggings, it's quite easy just off the top of your head to think about, um, you know, the other key words to use but if you are struggling to fill out all of the characters in these product titles and descriptions you can hop over to the Google Keyword Planner tool so we're now on the Google Keyword Planner tool you can find this within your ad account now let's just use coffee table as a different example here if you're struggling for other keywords and other search terms to put in your titles and descriptions for your merchant center listings you can use Keyword Planner simply type one or two or even three different variations of your product name for example here coffee table you can then sort by average monthly searches and it will give you a ton of other related keywords as well as showing you the search volume for them and essentially you want to get as many of these as possible in your title and description obviously you want to keep it relevant if you're not selling a black coffee table for example you don't want to be putting black coffee table in there you want to keep it relevant one thing I also like to say don't simply bullet point you know coffee table Ikea coffee table you know glass coffee table have it make sense still have it you know well structured rather than simple bullet points for me it's just something that I found to work better and I don't know this for sure but it just seems like if you bullet point tons and tons of keywords Google often doesn't pick all of them up so you want to keep it well structured and have it you know make literal sense rather than simply bullet pointing loads of keywords but you can still have structured sentences and paragraphs in your description and still have many keywords and search terms in there as well now moving on from this another thing people don't do is categorize their products now Google eventually will do this automatically for you so if you're not already in the correct product category for Google that again is something that could limit your reach. So again here, we just click the category tab on this in process shopping app and then select the right product category by simply searching in coffee table. You can see here, just an example, it gives you variations of your product category. Just click the one that's most relevant to you. And if you scroll down, there are many other things you could fill out for each of your products as well, such as color, material, size, age, gender. You wanna fill as many of these boxes in as possible. The more information and data Google has on your product, the better and the more optimized your reach
reach will be. And please don't panic if you don't use a SIM process shopping app. You can do all of this directly in Google Merchant Center as well. Just simply click the product you want to edit. You can edit the product and obviously in a slightly different layout, you can still easily update the product title, description, category, everything you need to, the same as the SIM process shopping app. Now next up, another reason could be your bid strategy. We're gonna use standard shopping here as the example because I find that most of my audience, if they're having trouble with getting clicks, it's usually because of a shopping campaign, whereas search, yes, it can take a little while to get going, but I find you often gain traction a bit quicker with the search campaign. So we're gonna use this particular account as an example and the standard shopping campaign that is currently live on it. So if we click settings here, this is only a campaign I made yesterday, but the current bid strategy I'm using is maximize clicks with a bid cap of 40p. Now, some people go in, make standard shopping campaigns, they'll either use maximize clicks or they'll use manual CPC. There's nothing wrong with these bid strategies, but what they'll then do is set the bid cap or the maximum CPC limit way too low. Now, some of you might think, you know, 40p is incredibly low. However, the particular products I'm advertising, this is quite an average cost per click for this particular group of products. So this is an acceptable max CPC. Whereas many other categories of products require a much higher cost per click just to get, you know, even shown on Google Ads. So if you don't know what to set your bid limit as, again, let's go back over to the keyword planner. We'll use coffee table as an example. You can see you've got a top of page bid low range here, top of page bid high range here. Essentially what this means is the bid range for these particular product is anywhere from 24 to 88p. 88p being on the more high end competitive end of results. Usually if you're bidding towards 88p, you're getting the better quality traffic. But if you want cheaper clicks, but you still want click, then you're gonna to wanna to bid towards this lower range. There's nothing wrong. In fact, I actually recommend starting off just above this low range bid, especially if you've got a limited budget because you're gonna get a bit more traffic and you'll still find you'll get conversions from the lower value clicks. So if we're using coffee table as the example here, I would probably set my bid at about 28 or 29p to begin with. If after four to five days, I'm not really seeing any traction, I'll then increase it by 20% or so. And then I'll simply keep increasing it every three to five days until it starts to spend my daily budget. But if you still can't get it to work with having a max CPC limit and you are desperate for clicks, you can simply use the maximize clicks bid strategy and turn off this bid limit. This will essentially guarantee you're gonna get clicks on your ad. It's not the smartest way to do it, but if you're desperate, this is the route you wanna go down. But for me personally, you can see I use maximize clicks currently for standard shopping. Yes, as I mentioned in my other video, as I begin to scale, I will then switch over to target ROAS, but you only switch over to target ROAS when your campaign is spending and getting you sales. So we're not gonna talk about that in today's video. And finally, we're keeping this video short and simple. The next and final thing I'm gonna mention in this video is gonna be product imagery. Now, you drop shippers out there, if you're still ripping pictures straight from AliExpress, that could be a reason your ads aren't showing or not getting clicks because the image quality is usually very low. And likely you're gonna see other sellers on Google using the same pictures as you. So there's nothing wrong with ordering the product, taking your own pictures or sending it off to a professional photographer to get good quality images. And again, using coffee table as an example, you can see some very high quality pictures here. And another example I really like to use just to prove my point almost is using pizza oven. Now you can see every image here has a white background apart from a handful towards the end. I would highly recommend split testing white background images versus what I call lifestyle product images with the product, you know, essentially with a background in use in its correct environment because these stand out a lot more for me personally than white background images and I've tested this endlessly with most of my best selling products and every single time the images that get a better click through rate are going to be these lifestyle product images so order your own products if you're drop shipping or if you've got your own separate brand your own private brand and you're using white background images and you're not getting clicks then please do go ahead and give these lifestyle type images a try. You might notice a huge difference. I certainly have in favor of the lifestyle images. So I hope these few things are gonna be useful to you guys. Definitely give these a go if you're struggling to see any momentum with your Google account. And like I said at the start, if you'd rather a team of experts to take over and manage your Google account, then please do fill out the form on my Google Ads Agency website, link in the description below. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.